There are thousands of women and girls known as Kayaye working in the markets of Ghana's capital, Accra, transporting wares on their head. They carry up to 40 kilos at a time. They come from rural families in the north of the country, effectively migrants in their own land. Zenaibu tells us she's 17 years old and has three children. She comes from Walla Walla in the north. She earns 20 sedis a day, around five euros, for herself and her children. We travel to the north of the country. This is where the Sahelian zone begins, a belt between the Sahara Desert and the savanna to the south. There is some farming, but very little rain. In the village of Savalugo, a theater group is about to perform. Many people from this region would love to go to Europe. The theater group has taken up the issue. Amina Mukaila was once a refugee himself. He tells of his experiences in the desert and trying to cross the Mediterranean. Believe me, few make it across the desert, he says. Then the story begins. One family has a son who's earning well abroad. His father can buy a tractor. Then another man comes on, the father of another family. He's envious and wants a tractor too. So he sends his daughter and two sons to Europe. Preparations for the journey begin. They pay a so-called connecting man who promises safe passage to Libya. The journey begins. One of their friends dies of thirst on the way and they bury him in the Sahara. Amida Mukaila founded the African Development Organization for Migration, or AFDOM for short. The group tours the villages and produces radio clips. They also teach in schools on the dangers of trying to get to Europe. The play continues. The sister gets raped by a trafficker and dies. The brothers feel guilty for not protecting her. The oldest son eventually returns home. His sister is dead, his brother drowned in the Mediterranean. The parents are shocked and grieved. The son cannot bear to live with the guilt and sense of failure. The regional capital, Tamale, has become a hub for migration. Amino Mukaila meets refugees here all the time. Many of those people migrating are from the rural places. They come, to, they come to Tamale as a transit point, arrange themselves, and then they go. AFDOM has an office in Tamale. Most of the workers are former refugees. Ibrahim Wompini broke off his journey in the desert in Mali. He knows many similar cases. Uncountable. They are, they are, they are more than number. Those I know. So 10 or 20? Not, not even more than 100. And I even know some who are in the, now in Europe uh, and they are not finding it easy. Some of them even want to, I mean, just to get fair and come back home and it's a problem to them. Amina Munkaila has written an account of his own story. He says crossing the desert was the worst. The traffickers charged 140 euros per person, taking 28,000 euros in all. More than 200 people in the car. So at a point in time, people suffocate to death. People suffocate just because they, they overloaded the nature of the, 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 the vehicle. People suffocate to death. That's one thing. And sometimes when you are going and you, your car breaks up on the way, that's also another serious problem. People end up dying on, on the route. There were some few women in our car, there were about six. Some from Nigeria and then some from Ghana. This is a po point and a place where they will just call them, send them to their house and be raping them whilst you are away waiting for them to go. At that point, if you try to misbehave, they ask you to lie down and face the sun. Imagine on the desert. Amino Mokaila tried three times to cross to Italy. Twice the boat capsized and he ended up back in Libya. On his third attempt, he was rescued by a ship from the German charity Cap Anamur and taken to Italy, together with other refugees from Ghana. But they were immediately deported. Amino Mokaila comes from a farming family. His father was unable to support him. He takes us to the village of Gubula Higu. Thanks to a new irrigation system, local residents are escaping subsistence farming. Now they can even harvest crops twice a year. 
Now I harvest 35 sacks of rice per hectare. I used to get just five. But we need tractors if we want to expand the area we farm. Then we wouldn't have so many people leaving, like our girls who go to Accra to carry market wares. Some of my family have already gone. A reservoir dam has turned the savanna into an oasis. The rice and vegetable plantations here, sponsored by European aid, are exemplary. Amino and AFDOM want to initiate more projects like this. So we want to see how best, as much as we are campaigning, vigorously campaigning against or convincing them not to go, we should also have an alternative for them to stay in Ghana here. Maybe initiatives like those organized by AFDOM will encourage more people to stay, providing a decent future for them here in their homeland so they don't attempt the dangerous journey to Europe.